Good morning and welcome to Book A Day. Today we're going to be talking about a different kind of book. The book is called In the Hot Zone. It's One Man, One Year, Twenty Wars. It's um, a journalist who went around the world in a year and visited people in 20 hot zones that are experiencing war in these past few years. Um, he talks about how he speaks with rebels, government troops, child soldiers, and child brides. He features the people on every side, including those caught in the crossfire. He goes to places like Afghanistan, Lebanon, Iran, Syria, Israel, Colombia, Haiti, Kashmir, Nepal, Lebanon. He goes around the world really looking at people and forcing us, forcing the reader, to meet these people. Most of the book really is these interviews with the people that he has met. The cool thing about this book, however, is in the very last page on the back cover, there is a DVD about an hour long and you actually can see the interviews with a number of these people. It's a very, very impressive, um, not graphic, but very impressive um, look at the world and what's happening right now. He says at the very end of the book, um, it is what he learned in the chapter about what he learned. He says the final sentence he takes from Reverend Martin Luther King and he says, it is not enough to say we must not wage war. It is necessary to love peace and sacrifice for it. I want to give you one of his little interviews. This is with a woman in South Sudan. He says, I'm wandering through Malkawalkan by myself, as conspicuous and perhaps as silly looking as a walking snowman, when I see a young woman pounding corn next to her hut. With two hands, she is raising a heavy log as high as her head and bringing the rounded tip down onto a concave wooden stump filled with corn kernels. With each lift and downward heave, there is a dull rhythmic lump as she turns the kernels into powdery meal flour. She stops for a second and wipes a dripping sweat from her forehead as she sees me walking toward her. She is in her early to mid-twenties with high cheekbones and smooth skin the color of eggplant. She smiles, laughs as I say something ridiculous to her in English, maybe commenting on how hard she's working, even though she does not understand a word coming out of my mouth. She returns to her work, again laughing, while I tape her from various angles. Just as the rest of the South Sudan village, she has virtually nothing, only the tattered clothes on her body, her grinding tools, and some corn kernels. She is not worried about how her hut is furnished, her breast size, or where she will holiday in the summer. She is just pounding corn and laughing at me, and I am almost certain it is the truest laugh I have ever heard. Um, there are some wonderful people that we meet in these pages. There are also some very sad stories that we are witness to. Um, and it helps us really to open our eyes and see the reality of the situation in the world. And the reality of civilians caught in areas of war. Um, he ends his little prologue saying, But as I watched the images of grief televised from Virginia, I hoped that when our national mourning was over, we as American citizens might feel a renewed sense of empathy because of this incident, one robust enough to transcend our national boundaries and inspire us to see the rest of the world. We are carrying this book. We want to carry this book because we need to start addressing some of the issues that are happening around us from a Christian perspective, from the Founder's perspective of talking about everything in a Christian way. Um, we don't want to address policies, we don't want to criticize um, decisions that are made by the government or political figures. If we look at what Christians are putting out, it would put us kind of in that category, um, from an evangelical political category that would not really be helpful for our people. This book is by Harper. It's a wonderful book, really just plain looking at the facts and looking at the people and learning how to open our eyes. So the book is only $15. It would be an easy book for someone to pick up whose conscience was really 
inspired to get interested in something larger about the issues that we deal with every day um, in the newspaper, worrying about the war in Iran or other hot spots around the country, around the world. So this book actually is going to copies to five different houses, Manhattan, Alexandria, Chicago, LA, and Dedham. If any other house thinks that they would like to carry this book, let me know. Um, and we'll give it a try. There's another book coming out soon by Harper, which looks at children in war zones around the world. And it's the same type of a deal. And um, so we, we're hoping that you will be able to offer this um, to your customers in this kind of a spirit, in the spirit of a Christian looking at reality, looking at the reality in order to personally, in my own way and in my own life, take a certain responsibility for the decisions and the challenges and the responsibilities and the drama and the tragedies of our century, of this time in which we are living. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye.